How do we use Google Earth to derive slope and other measurements? Well, we've already practiced obtaining elevations, and you know from working with Google Earth that simply hovering your cursor over the landscape shows you the elevation, and you just need to look in the lower uh, right corner, and we're looking specifically at the elevation, L-E-E-V, versus the eye altitude. Right? The al eye altitude is simply how far away you're, you are looking at the landscape, versus elevation is the actual height of the land at that point. But what about slope? How do we derive slope in Google Earth? Well, Google Earth has a couple ways of doing that, and one is through a simple visualization. The other one actually allows for measurement. So we know that if we uh, tilt the Earth to change our perspective from a planimetric to an oblique by holding the shift key and then dragging down with the mouse, we can take a look at the landscape and see uh, how the elevation behaves, how the landscape behaves, and we can see some of the topography. And we can, of course, exaggerate it by changing the vertical exaggeration. That's one way of, of visualizing what's happening with the landscape. The other tool that Google Earth has is what's called a path profile. And so I'm going to demonstrate that here. So we're looking down at Central Campus right here and South Campus. And I'm going to draw a path between these two. And we're going to uh, look at how the topography or the landscape behaves between those two locations along that path. So along the top menu bar is the path tool to add a path and it works kind of like a place mark. You click on that once and it brings up the new path dialog window so it's going to allow you to create a path and save it. So I'm going to click once over here in the central campus parking lot that's going to lay down the first vertex and then go to the south campus parking lot and I'm going to click once and it lays down another vertex and you see the two points connecting that line. Just to uh, make it stick out a little bit more I'm going to change the color to a nice bright red and I'm going to make the width uh, fairly thick so it's really obvious. So I hit OK and you can see over here in the places column that untitled path I could have named it is this line that I've just created. Now what I want to know is how does the terrain uh, the landscape behave along that path between Central Campus and South Campus. Well, what I can do is if I right click on Untitled Path and choose Show Elevation Profile, it will construct an elevation profile along that path. Okay, So I'm going to tilt the screen a little bit just so you can see what we're looking at here. Oops, I should go the other way because that's the way it's constructed. Bear with me here. Okay, there we go. So you can see a little bit from the vertical exaggeration how the path behaves as we go along. But with the, uh, the path profile, we can actually get measurements along that profile. And you can see how it shows us uh, what's happening. Now, what's going on here is that the upper number on the arrow is showing us the elevation of the land at that point along the path. The number on the lower left is the distance from our starting point along that path, and the number on the right is the slope at that point. It's a percentage slope, and it's measured from the last point to the current point, right? Because the slope is always a, a, a measurement of the relationship between two points, right? Rise over run. When we look at the entire profile, of course, as we move along, we can see how the elevation changes. And as we've already discovered previously, we actually um, rise in elevation as we go towards South Campus, which it might be a little counterintuitive, counterintuitive, counterintuitive at first. Okay, so there we go. The, the path profile shows us the behavior of the landscape as we move along this path. Now, there's a lot of information presented along the top bar on the path profile. Uh, you're giving uh, minimum, average, maximum elevations along the entire path. You're given the total distance along the entire along that path. In this case, we traveled about 2,008 feet. Uh, elevation gains and loss, and you get slope uh, numbers. Now, I want to draw attention to the slope values here because the slope values are um, what you're given are maximum slopes, both in terms of an incline, which is a positive number, and a decline, which is a negative number. And then you're also given average slopes. Now, the average slopes. Uh, I think it's important to understand are being calculated all along the path. So they're basically, uh, if you can imagine, there's hundreds of little points along this path where elevation has been recorded. And 
Again, remembering how slope is calculated, the slope is being calculated between one point and the next point. If you can imagine doing that several hundred times across and then averaging all that numbers, that's what your average slope is. Now, if we want to calculate the slope, though, between the two points that we lay down, we only want to really work with two numbers. Um, we're going to want to know the horizontal distance, or the run, right? And that is given to us. That, that is the total distance of the line we, or the path that we just drew. And the second number that we need is going to be the rise, or the change in elevation between two points, right? So in this case, that really is only going to be at our starting point, right? So at that point, if you look on the, the profile, we're at 10 feet, and as we move toward the end, our ending point is at 16 feet, right? So those are the two numbers we want. So the difference in elevation between our starting point and our ending point is what? Should be 6 feet, correct? Okay, so that's our rise, right? So we know that slope is always calculated as rise over run. So if we wanted to derive the slope between those two points, between Central Campus and South Campus, we would take our rise, which is the number 6, divided by the run, which in this case was 2,008 feet. Okay, That's going to give us a decimal number. Right? And then to finish it off, to make it into a percent slope, we multiply by 100. Okay. And so what we have is a 0.3% slope. Right? 0.3%. So that would be the slope derived in Google Earth.